Uh, so architecture needs to be built and on top of nature. I believe that um, in a way architecture has uh, to dialogue with nature and I've been trying to, through my work, understand what is the best way of dialing, dialoguing with uh, nature. I think that um, we human beings have a basic necessity of having a roof on top of ourselves because we cannot survive otherwise. And we proved somehow that caves are not for us. We are um, human beings that need other types of covers, not just covers, you know, but beautiful spaces to inspire our lives. Uh, so architecture needs to be built and on top of nature. So how do we create that relationship? It's been a long interest of my work and I think um, architecture can, architecture at the end comes from nature, you know, because at the end we build the environment but from the environment, you no? Know? And I like to also link my architecture very much to that directly. So sometimes we build with the earth from the ground uh, of the projects that we're building and sometimes we are mixing that earth with other materials or we we cook it and we do bricks or whatever. Uh, but I like to, to link it very much directly, a direct link, no? Um, so sometimes I like to, to think that it not only learns, but it comes from there, uh, directly or indirectly. That's my way of understanding at least, or how I approach the buildings. But, and then I think that, um, I believe that I have incredible relationship and I, this is the way I, I, I teach. It's, it's two-way learning, no? So I don't, I don't believe in, in this, the professor and the, and the learner. No, I believe that it, the, the most enriching relationship is when the two sides learn. Um, so I would think that nature also has things to learn from architecture, no? Um, or at least dialogue. I, I speak more of in terms of dialogue than a learning process. No, I believe that um, these two possibly counterparts, I don't know if I want to call them counterparts, uh, can speak. And, and by establishing a, a nice way of uh, like the first sentence, of that dialogue, I think then it would become a dialogue and more enriching dialogue in, even in the future. No? And this is what I tried to do in the Botanical Garden specifically. For me it was really important to understand how these two worlds could speak each, to each other and could then almost blend and become one. And it's starting to happen no? after 15 years of the first buildings, or well, the first buildings after 12 years, they're starting to be invaded by nature and, um, and architecture has started also to invade other parts of the, of the garden. So I think that it has started to become a beautiful dialogue. I believe there's a, a difference between the two environments. I mean, um, it's like two individuals speaking. We're totally different from each other, but we can speak and we can agree on things and, or we could disagree and fight. Uh, and I, I see nature and architecture the same way. And I believe that um, we as human beings are losing that connection because I think that probably the built environment has a lot to blame because I don't think that people have thought of the built environment of being a counterpart of, of nature that could dialogue with it. No, I think uh, if we see this separation and as a binary, the built environment of the nature, we're damaging both, no? And I think that's what happened, what, that's what, what is happening, and this is why I think that uh, we're losing respect for that other because we're not looking at it, no? I think that when you're not able to look at the other, you are not able to relate with, so you're not, you don't care. And I think that's the, the way that the built environment has acted towards nature. 
And I think this is why we are damaging it so much.